Please read the conditions of the problem. Let us better understand this problem's conditions and question. We must consider all the right triangles, like the one shown on the diagram, whose three vertices can be any points of intersection of grid lines shown on this diagram, except the origin of coordinates 0, 0. For each such triangle, we must calculate the ratio of side lengths AC to AB, assuming that letter A denotes the vertex at the right angle and vertex B is positioned counterclockwise from vertex A. This ratio is called tangent of angle B, or function f of this triangle. We must multiply all the ratios, and the product is the answer to the question of the problem. Well, to solve this problem, we will really need to make some discoveries. Otherwise, we can spend our life trying to calculate function f for all the triangles in this large set. Let's look at any right triangle ABC inside this grid with sides AB and AC parallel to X and Y axis. Let's draw a rectangle ABDC that has the hypotenuse BC of this triangle as its diagonal. Obviously, this rectangle contains four right triangles congruent to triangle ABC that can be constructed by placing letter A into each of the four vertices of the rectangle. If this rectangle happens to be a square, then the value of tangent of angle B is equal to 1. If it's not a square, then tangent of angle B alternates when letter A is moved around this rectangle to each next vertex. In two of four triangles, it is equal to the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side, and in the other two, it's the other way around, so that the product of these values for all four triangles is equal to 1. So, ordinarily, the values of function f for all the triangles in this grid would cancel each other and the product of all values of function f in this problem would be equal to 1. Let's look at some rectangle inside this grid whose bottom left vertex is in the origin point 0, 0. If we place letter A into each of its four vertices and construct our right triangles ABC, we will see that three of these four triangles have one vertex with coordinates 0, 0, and therefore are excluded from set T. The only triangle that is included in set T has its vertex A in the upper right vertex of this rectangle. Now let us look at each such triangle, calculate tangent of angle B in it, and then multiply these numbers. Once we have discovered our method, at this point, it's a no-brainer. We will just skip the isosceles triangles, since tangent of angle B for such triangles is equal to 1. So let's calculate tangent of angle B for each such triangle. 5 to 1, 5 to 2, 5 to 3, and 5 to 4. 4 to 1, 4 to 2, 4 to 3. 3 to 1, 3 to 2, 3 to 4. Then 2 to 1, 2 to 3, 2 to 4. And finally 1 to 2, 1 to 3, and 1 to 4. Let's calculate their product. It's equal to 625 over 24. We're done with the case of right triangles ABC whose A and B sides are parallel to axis X and Y. Let's now get to the case of right triangles 
whose sides AB and AC are not parallel to X and Y axis. We can make a discovery for case 2 similar to the discovery we made for case 1. Any right triangle in case 2 has a symmetrical triangle over the central vertical line marked with blue color, and tangent of angle B in the symmetrical triangle is reciprocal to tangent of angle B in the first triangle. In this example that we see on the diagram, they are respectively 3 and 1 third, and their product is equal to 1. So ordinarily, the product of all triangles in case 2 is equal to 1, unless, of course, the origin 0, 0 is involved. The only exception to this rule is when a right triangle is itself symmetrical over the central vertical line with blue color. But in this case, this triangle is isosceles and we don't care about it anyway because tangent of its angle is equal to 1. Let us examine the triangles from case 2 whose symmetrical triangle has two sides that emanate from origin 0, 0 since such triangles are clear candidates to be counted in the final product. The highlighted triangle on the diagram is a right triangle since angle A is the sum of two 45 degrees angles. The value of function f, that is tangent of its angle B, is equal to one fourth, and its counterpart, symmetrical to it over the central vertical line, the second triangle that is not highlighted has its vertex in the origin of coordinates, so it is excluded from set T. Since the highlighted triangle, ABC, is included in set T, its value of function F, that is equal to one-fourth, must be counted in the final product. The same is true for this highlighted triangle. Its value of function f is equal to two-thirds. It turns out that this triangle and the previous one are the only two triangles in case 2 whose values of function f are not cancelled by other symmetrical triangles. Let's multiply them now so we don't forget them, and then we'll return to other triangles in case 2. Let's look again at two triangles from case 2. They have one property in common. Each of them has two sides emanating from the origin 0, 0, of which at least one side ends outside of the square 4 units by 4 units with bottom left corner at the origin. This is the only other right triangle whose two sides emanate from the origin, and that is outside of the square 4 units by 4 units. This triangle is isosceles, and so is its partner triangle symmetrical over the central vertical line, so we don't care about them. Let us examine the triangles whose two sides emanate from the origin 0, 0, and that are completely inside the square 4 units by 4 units, with its bottom left corner at the origin. It's easy to see that for each such triangle, there is another triangle whose two sides also emanate from the origin, that is symmetrical to the first one over the diagonal line marked with blue color. The values of function f of these two triangles are reciprocal to each other. Their counterparts that are symmetrical to these two triangles over the central vertical line are also symmetrical to each other over their own diagonal line marked with blue color on this diagram, and their f functions are reciprocal to each other, so they don't need to be counted in the final product. The conclusion, we must now multiply two products of function values we calculated earlier for the two cases of triangles. The final product is equal to 625, over 144. The answer is B.